Okay, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Phil Calvert and a very warm welcome. Thank you very much for joining me. I just want to make sure, first of all, before we get going, that everybody can um, hear me so far. So just put a just type yes into the Q&A or raise your hand or something like that. Heather can hear me. Jason can hear me. People are raising their hands. Good. That sounds excellent. So we're going to we're going to uh, crack on. Oh, we've got a question straight away. All good from Stuart. All good from James. Perfect. Thank you very much indeed. Right. So let's get stuck in and find something for you to watch. I'm going to dispense with the sort of normal introductions today because that's all a bit long winded. So I want to give you uh, as much value as I can possibly give in the hour that we have and uh, move straight on. So today we're going to be looking at uh, LinkedIn and how to attract more of the clients you really want on LinkedIn. Um, why am I the person to be talking about this? Well, I've written a couple of books about LinkedIn, uh, plus a wider marketing book. Um, you can get a free PDF copy of uh, LinkedIn Lead Generation Secrets if you stick around to the end, and I'll give you a link where you can get a PDF copy of that book. It's got lots of tips in there. It's also got a, a kind of planner in there, so you can do a, a daily plan for how you want to use LinkedIn so that we get a bit more systemized. That's one of the big problems with financial advisors on, on LinkedIn. There's not enough system, so we'll explain a bit more about that. And it's pretty obvious from comments in our Facebook group that LinkedIn can be fairly hard work for a lot of people. We're not quite sure why we're on the site. Uh, we seem to get approached by an awful lot of recruiters, and that's understandable. But I have to tell you, if you're being approached by recruiters on LinkedIn, that's your fault. So we're going to have to show you a few things today that will have the right people getting in contact with you so that uh, we can get a little less stressed about this. Um, we're going to do about 60 minutes. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them along the way. But um, I've done this a few times and I kind of know which questions are going to get asked. So hopefully I'll cover them off. If I don't cover them off, I will get back to you personally to do that for you. So as I said, stick around to the end, please. Um, and you'll get a free copy of that, uh, that book, the PDF version. But I'll also do uh, an analysis. I've got an analysis tool which uh, you answer some simple questions about how you use LinkedIn and it will give you a personalized report based on your answers. So it'll give you personalized suggestions for improvement, things that you can be doing better, things that you can be thinking about as you go forward. So let me introduce you to someone. Uh, Ernest Charles Prudence, what a wonderful name. Uh, Ernest was an entrepreneur. Uh, he was an expert at what he does. Um, he was a very keen golfer and he was a networker. In fact, uh, he was one of the world's leading experts at what he does. Um, if he was on LinkedIn today, it would say his LinkedIn profile would say that he was the uh, founder and managing director of the new Pelopone engine company in Leeds in the north of England. Um, Ernest also, as well as uh, creating engines, he was offered a knighthood for uh, during the war for making aircraft engines more efficient so that they could fly further. Um, Ernest was an engineer. Uh, he invented a few things that uh, you probably know and love. He invented the dimmer switch, he invented hydraulics, and he also invented the dishwasher. Now we love Ernest, don't we? As I said, he was a bit of a networker as well, and uh, he used to network with other engineers. Uh, the gentleman on the left is Barnes Wallace, Sir Barnes Wallace, as of the Bouncing Bomb. In fact, they live next door to each other in Effingham in Surrey. Um, and Ernest and um, Barnes used to actually, they used to discuss the prototype ideas for the actual Bouncing Bomb. Earlier in Ernest's career, he used to hang out with the gentleman on the right. And the gentleman on the right is John Logie Baird, uh, the man who's widely credited with inventing television. And uh, you may know the story that when Logie Baird first presented TV to the world, uh, there was a small, very select group of scientists in a room, I think it was in Crystal Palace, um, and Ernest was one of the men in that room. Ernest was my grandfather. Uh, I never met him. Um, which, which is a shame, he died just before I was born. But although he was a subject expert like you, um, he was a huge believer in the concept of people by people. I think we all know that. Um, it's a phrase that we know, we hear, we pull it out every now and again. Um, but it is particularly important on LinkedIn. 
one of the key points about LinkedIn and the LinkedIn algorithm is designed to reward people who are networkers, who go out of their way to support, help and engage other people. The LinkedIn algorithm penalizes people for being overly promotion, but we'll, uh, we'll go into that in a bit more detail. So, and we'll see how this is all relevant as we go. So how do financial advisors typically attract new business? If you were on our webinar last week, you saw a slightly different version of this. Uh, you know, you were at a dinner party, you needed some, a recommendation for a financial advisor. Someone around the table would say, check out my financial advisor, they're great. We would write their phone number down on the napkin. The next day we would phone them up. These days it's a little bit different. Someone says, yeah, check out my financial planner, Jones & Co, they're great. We will go, thank you. We will uh, write their website address down on the napkin. And the next day, we don't phone them up. The next day, we go on to Google. We go on to LinkedIn. We go on to Facebook. We go on to the internet to just sort of get a sense of whether this is somebody we like the look of, what's their website look like. Um, and an interesting thing happens while we're on Google and while we're on LinkedIn, we don't just find Jones & Co's uh, website. What we also find is other financial advisors' websites, other financial advisors' LinkedIn pages. Um, so we're given more choice than we were expecting. And it may well be that Jones & Co financial planning might not actually get our business. Uh, and I'll show you an example of that a, a little bit later, um, because we might find somebody else's website. We say, oh, we like the look of them um maybe i'll take a look at them but what we might also do is we might find a blog or a youtube channel or a podcast um, about financial planning or aspects of financial planning that we're interested in and it, we may start thinking well, actually i don't need to see a financial planner perhaps uh, i can figure this out for myself so although the internet gives us more opportunity as financial advisors to get found, we really have to stand out from the crowd from everybody else because everybody else is being found. And one of the reasons why everybody else is being found is because you know, marketing people will have us believe that this is what we need to be doing um, on LinkedIn these days. Uh, we need to be on a Facebook group, we need to have a podcast, we need to have a YouTube channel. We need to be on LinkedIn. We need to be doing all of this stuff. And to be quite honest, this is just nonsense. What we really need to be doing is knowing who our exact dream ideal client is and asking them, where do you hang out online? Do you like podcasts? Do you like Facebook? Do you watch YouTube? And actually ask our dream clients, where do you tend to hang out? What's, what's best for you? And this idea that we can be all things to all people and do all things for all people all of the time everywhere just isn't sustainable in the long term. Far better, find out where they are, pick a couple of channels and really put your effort onto those channels. Trust me, unless you are dealing with clients over the age of 80, a great number, a very high number of your potential clients are on LinkedIn right now. They are there. It's as simple as that. And, and we've got to get away from this idea that it, this is all about technology. Time and time again, financial advisors say to me, Phil, I see Jones & Co down the road, they're using YouTube, maybe we should give that a go. And uh, Smith & Co down the road, they're using Facebook, maybe we should give that a go. And somebody else down the road is using Twitter, maybe we should give that a go. But I have to say, give that a go is not a strategy. Tweet and hope is not a plan. Well, it is a plan, but it's not a very good one. Forget about the technology and focus on the technique. And that's what LinkedIn is all about. LinkedIn is a social networking site, not a social media site. If we go back to 2003, when LinkedIn was first around, in fact, even before LinkedIn in the late 1990s, there was another B2B, B2C social networking site the word social media just didn't exist. Um, and there's a clue in the title. Social media is about noise and broadcasting. Social networking is about interacting, engaging, supporting and introducing people to one another. And LinkedIn rewards people for being networkers, not broadcasters. So, you know, at, at conferences, when we were allowed to speak, um, in front of people on a stage, I'd always ask people in the audience, put your hands up if you're on LinkedIn. So people are putting their hands up here. Thank you very much indeed. Like everybody's on LinkedIn. But if I then go on to say to people, now tell me, put your hands up if you know why you're on LinkedIn. 
only a very small number of, of, of hands go up. And if I then go and say, now put your hands up if you've got a documented LinkedIn plan, nobody's hands go up. So we're all on LinkedIn. We're not quite sure why we are wasting our time. If we don't know why we're wasting our time, if we don't have a process to follow, um, we are wasting our time. And I know people waste their, their time on LinkedIn because I've done it myself and I still do it myself to some extent on certain days. You know, we go on either to the app or we go onto the, onto the main website and we see the news feed and it's kind of relevant. We're not quite sure. Um, and then we see the little red dot. Somebody wants to connect with us. And then we agonize over, should I connect with this person? What's the right thing to do? And oh, there's a recruiter and I should me. I don't really don't want to talk to them. Then we might go into a group and have a look around there. Then we might comment. It's just fluffy and fluffiness on LinkedIn gets you absolutely nowhere. There's still a lot of people who think that LinkedIn is, is a fancy job site. And yeah, they sure they still make a lot of their money from a recruitment and jobs related activities. Um, but LinkedIn is far more than that now. LinkedIn today is what's called a real time networking platform. In fact, it is all of these things. It is anything you want it to be. LinkedIn strategy. And as you may know, LinkedIn is owned by Microsoft now. LinkedIn strategy is to be an all-encompassing business tool that just, you know, anything, you need to do anything in your business, you can do it. Uh, if you want to use it as a search engine, you can do it. If you want to find read the news, you can do that. Yeah, it's a messaging tool. It's a social network. It's a blogging platform. It's a job site. There is so much that you can do with it. And what LinkedIn wants to try and do is to keep you on there with some great features as, as long as they can possibly keep you there. But here's another thing. The LinkedIn algorithm rewards you for using as many of the different features that it offers as you can. The more features you use, the more it rewards you. And one of the ways it rewards you is to make you more visible in the search results. At the end of the day, LinkedIn is the people search engine. You want to find experts? They're on LinkedIn. Right now on LinkedIn, there are people looking for pension experts, investment experts, equity release experts. There are people doing that using the search engine right now. So it's my job today to try and help you to be visible in their search results so they actually find you. A lot of people ask about what's the best way to get LinkedIn leads on LinkedIn? How do we use the search? How do we go and find people? Well, yeah, you can go and find people, but the method I teach gets people coming to you. That's a far better way of doing it. Rather than you having to put all that effort in to go and find people, let's turn it around the other way and use LinkedIn in a way that they come find you. Much, much better to do it that way around. But of course, LinkedIn's got a lot of members and um, you know, you've got to stand out from the crowd. So if people are looking for a pensions expert or a financial planning expert, we need them to find you as opposed to all the other experts that are out there. The problem is, uh, most financial advisors, LinkedIn profiles all say the same thing. They all look the same. They're all written in exactly the same way. We've got to stop being lookalikes. We've got to differentiate ourselves. We've got to stand out from the crowd. None of you watching this today are paid to look and behave like other financial advisors, okay? You need to stand out from the crowd, and we'll show you a few ways of doing that. Now, if you are on LinkedIn, you are marketing yourself, full stop. And if you are not already receiving visits and inquiries from complete strangers on LinkedIn, if that's not already happening, then arguably you're not marketing yourself as effectively as you could be. So we'll show you how to do that. Now, as I said, everything revolves around LinkedIn search. And what tends to happen is I'm just going to broadly run through the sort of flow of activity on LinkedIn. You create your profile. You put some keywords into your profile. You do some stuff on LinkedIn and you also start using hashtags and I'll explain hashtags a little, little bit later. So it all starts with you. Now, there, as I said, there are people on LinkedIn, they are searching for people like you and they get their search results with a whole bunch of, of different people. Um, but what we wanna make sure is they, they find you, they decide that you're the one they wanna go and have a look at their profile. So let's imagine that you've appeared high in the search results. These people searching for your expertise, they will go have a look at your profile. They might send a connection request. The chances are they won't personalize that connection request, but 
they'll they'll somehow want to get in touch with you one way or another. They will leave clues that they've looked at your profile. It is now your job to start a conversation with them, a conversation that in the old days we would have ideally had in a coffee shop, something like that. But the conversation starts through the LinkedIn messaging tool, yeah? You'll exchange a few messages, but your job is to get them off LinkedIn. The chances that someone will find you on LinkedIn and send a message say, I see you're a pensions expert. I want to engage you to work on my planning, please. Uh, give me a call at your convenience. That, it doesn't really, it does happen like that, but as you well know, you usually have to have a conversation with someone to A, see if they're the right fit um, before it moves on from there. So the, the conversation starts with the messaging tools, hopefully it'll end up in a coffee shop, and if all goes well, it will end up in the champagne bar because they turn out to be an absolute fantastic client. That is broadly speaking what does happen or what should happen. Now, the first thing, the first mistake that financial advisors make on LinkedIn is they are not ultra clear about who they are looking for on LinkedIn or who they want to visit their profile. And the clearer you are, the better. Now, let me use a, a fairly extreme example, but it's a relevant one. Um, if, for example, you are a financial planner and your target market is heart surgeons in West London who are nearing retirement, if that's your market, you will know what worries them. You will know what they are worried about today. You will know what they are thinking about. You will know what excites them. You will know what motivates them. You will know what scares them. You will know your target market. And it's really important to come up with this in marketing speak, this ideal client avatar. And you need to write your, pro your profile as if it is speaking directly to those people. So, there are over 700 million users on LinkedIn. So it's big, there's a lot of opportunity. It's still dwarfed by Facebook, but we'll talk about Facebook in, a, in another of our winter webinars another time. The key thing financial advisors need to do is get profile visits. If you want clients from LinkedIn, this is what all your effort should go into doing. And one of the main ways to do that is by creating curiosity. And I'll explain a little bit more about how we do that. You know, all marketing is based around curiosity. Something is said, something is written, something is watched that we go, mm, that's interesting. I'd like to learn a bit more. Your profile has to pique people's curiosity. Your activity on LinkedIn has got to create, create curiosity. A comment that you might, might make on someone else's post has got to be done in such a way that people go, I need to just check out this profile. Who is this person? They look interesting to me. And when you get profile visits on LinkedIn, uh, you are far more likely to end up in a conversation that will lead to business being written than using any other social networking platform. Literally, it's hand, head and shoulders above. In terms of making professional connections compared with other social networking platforms, LinkedIn way ahead. Improving the effectiveness of your network, LinkedIn way ahead. Building your brand identity, way ahead. Cultivating prospects, way ahead, way ahead, way ahead. It works on every single level. And here's the thing. You know, five years ago, you could, you could use Facebook and get free advertising, free marketing, and a lot of clients by using Facebook five years ago. Five years ago, most financial advisors were far too nervous to use Facebook for lead generation, but it was absolutely free. These days, to get business on Facebook, you need to pay, full stop. They are monetizing the platform big time. LinkedIn right now is how Facebook was five years ago. So my advice is fill your boots. Now, here's an interesting thing. When, they, when people from LinkedIn visit your website, the stats show that people stick around for much, much longer and they give me data. And I've done some work on my own website where I compare the amount of time people spend on my website. I compare visitors from LinkedIn and everybody else. And the visitors from LinkedIn spend 140% more time on my website uh, than normal visitors. And they stay on the website. They don't bounce straight off. The bounce rate, you know, a good bounce rate on any website is about 23, 25%. 
anything lower than that is exceptional but the bounce rate i get from people visiting from linkedin is is absolutely negligible now that's because i've my communication methodology on linkedin is designed to send people to my website and when they're on my website i collect data from them i use a tool called a scorecard which if you were on last week's webinar um, i was talking about how astonishingly effective scorecards are as a method of turning your website visitors into genuine inquiries quality inquiries um, based around data. Um, anybody wants to know more about scorecards, just drop me a line. I'm creating scorecards for financial advisors as we speak. And I use a scorecard to collect data from people who visit my website. Now, when you ask people who are really, really doing well on LinkedIn, how's it helped you? This is what they say in order of preference. Number one, research people and companies. So most people are doing research on LinkedIn. Proof that LinkedIn's a search engine. Secondly, reconnect with people they used to know or used to work with. And thirdly, build relationships with people who could influence potential customers. And this is the point about networking again. On LinkedIn, if you go out of your way to introduce people to one another, ask them simple questions like, you know, what's going on in your business right now? Is there anyone I could introduce you to at the moment? If all you do is go onto LinkedIn and say, hi, I'm a financial planner, I can help you with your retirement income, they'll just run away, okay? But if you go out of your way to help people uh, and ask people simple questions, say, look, um, who could I introduce to you? I've got a reasonable size network, I know a lot of people, maybe I can introduce you to someone who could help you in your business. The LinkedIn algorithm rewards you for doing that. Okay, your prospects are already on LinkedIn. Your job is to find them or help them to find you get their attention, creating curiosity, and to start a conversation with them. That's all you've got to do. So let's open the, open the hood and see what's underneath. LinkedIn is made up of three core themes and 10 core elements. The three themes are identity, networking, and knowledge. Identity and reputation at a personal level and a corporate level. Networking, that means building your own network and also building other people's networks and knowledge, what things that you can learn, and also sharing your own knowledge. The 10 core elements of LinkedIn are all these bits. Your personal page, company page, groups, you've seen all these sort of things on LinkedIn as well. What's interesting is most financial advisors are only using the top bit, their personal page. They don't go into groups all that often. Um, they're not using these other tools, sales solutions, they're not talking about uh, volunteering experience, and they're not using LinkedIn learning. The more bits of LinkedIn that you use, the more the algorithm rewards you by making you more visible in search results. Search is absolutely everything. All these bits fall underneath the search tool. So, you need to have a plan. It's as simple as that. You need to understand, why am I on LinkedIn? Just literally get, get an envelope, write it down. When it's written down, it's, you know, it gets a bit more serious. So this is my LinkedIn plan. And look how simple it is. My plan is to attract speaking and training business and sell a few books. That's it. To do that, I have to be visible where my clients and target markets are. They are all on LinkedIn. The way I do that is by creating conversations with people, just like you would do in the real world, you know? And I do that by driving people off LinkedIn to my scorecard. My scorecard is the heart of my marketing. As I said, this is a tool that collects data and it gives them insights uh, into themselves, their business, based on the data that they give me. And my target markets are conference organizers and people who arrange meetings, people who book trainers, that sort of thing, financial advisors, suppliers to financial advisors, and I also do work in schools as well. So that's my plan. How hard is that to create? If we were doing a workshop face-to-face -face live right now, I'd get you to create your plan right now. Um, so, so important that use that as a model, maybe take a screenshot of that, but I will make sure you get a recording of this today. And I will make sure you get a copy of the slides as well. But this is one of the most important slides that you'll see. Okay, 
So your job is to start conversations that lead to your value ladder. What do I mean by a value ladder? Well, a value ladder is typically the series of trust building steps that make it pretty well inevitable that someone go, yep, you're the financial planner for me. Uh, so the purpose of a value ladder is to make it easier to start conversations and build relationships with prospects and clients. The value ladder for a dentist these days looks something like this. Um, teeth cleaning for free, teeth whitening for free quite often these days. They just want to get you in the building, give you a great bit of value, get a testimonial of you, off you, because what they really want you to do is to pay a subscription, uh, they really want you to pay for the expensive stuff. Yeah, you know, the cosmetic dentistry. Um, and these days, dentists can afford to do that by giving you teeth whitening, teeth cleaning for free. And here's the really interesting thing is that the dentist doesn't actually have to do the teeth cleaning or the teeth whitening. Someone else can do that. So again, for financial advisors, it's worth thinking about, okay, what could you offer people for free that just gets people in the building or into your world? The value letter for a chiropractor, again, broadly similar. Ideally, they want you to fork out a lot of money on an ongoing wellness or care plan or to go on their twice a year weekend retreat. Um, but it starts with a free consultation, maybe a free massage of some sort. They get you into their world so that they, you get to know them, like them, get to trust them. So it makes it inevitable that you'll wanna go further up the ladder. What do you think about the value ladder for a gym is? Well, the value ladder for a gym actually has a, as a day of the year, which it actually starts on, 1st of January, isn't it? That's the time, the time of year uh, when gyms and health clubs really start pushing their marketing out there. And what do they do? They give you a free trial. They get you into the building. They look after you, maybe get some testimonials, because what they really want you to do is to start paying for the ongoing uh, plan, um, personal training, that sort of thing. So what do you think the value ladder for a financial advisor is? Well, most financial advisors don't have a value ladder of any description. We are starting to see that starting to appear. Um, I actually help financial advisors put their value ladder together. But a value, and uh, this is my value ladder for financial advisors. You know, the stuff in green is free. Those of you in uh, my Facebook group or my marketing group, that group's free. But my goodness, the value in there is astonishing. It's off the scale. Uh, maybe a free ebook, a free e guide, uh, taking my scorecard. That's a real high value thing. Ask, answer a few questions, you get a personalized report. The things in blue are either free or I charge for them. So today's is a free webinar. Uh, sometimes I give away my books. Uh, the things in black, you pay for. Um, some of you have been on my live workshops in London and, and elsewhere. But what you're looking is we're gradually going up. The stuff in red is reassuringly expensive. But if my website only said, join me for my three-day weekend marketing retreat, where we'll go to a really fancy hotel uh, out in the countryside uh, with a michelin starred chef and we'll have some expert speakers and we'll do some yoga and stuff like that that's expensive if my website just said sign up for my weekend retreat i'm not going to have any takers at all what i need to do is to kind of tease people into my world by giving away a mixture of free stuff but high value free stuff so that people want to go up to the next level so typically a financial advisor's value ladder Cool. Start with perhaps a conversation on LinkedIn. Yes, those conversations that you have with people on LinkedIn have value. Maybe you can then say to people, look, well, go and get a copy of my free e-guide from my website or I'm more than happy uh, send one to you. And then maybe you might have a scorecard on your website as well, where a website visitor can answer some questions about their attitude to risk, wealth, financial planning, and in return, they get a personalized report. Uh, then maybe you'll put on a webinar, maybe then we'll get to the financial planning stage, and then maybe financial advisors. You know, I know several financial advisors, particularly in the United States, who have weekend retreats. I know one who has a weekend retreat, and he charges $20,000 a head to attend his weekend retreat. Yeah, you think he does much financial planning? No, not if you're making 20,000 quid a weekend. So and he's got people queued up for these for months and months in advance. 
uh, a slightly more detailed value ladder. I mean, you wouldn't want to do all of this stuff as a financial advisor, but all of these sort of things you could include on your value ladder um, to build to bring people into your world. But it all starts on LinkedIn. So what do we think the single biggest mistake is that financial advisors make on LinkedIn? Have a quick think about that. What do you think it is? Well, I just have a quick sip of water. So the answer is not fully completing their profile with the emphasis on fully. If you do not have a fully complete profile and there's lots of sections, the LinkedIn algorithm will penalize you and it will make sure that you are seen by suppliers to financial advisors rather than potential clients to financial advisors. Suppliers don't really care if your website, if your profile isn't fully completed. That's why you get recruiters knocking on your door on LinkedIn. If you fill out your profile in detail and you write it as if it's aimed at your perfect dream client, guess who will turn up on your profile? Yes, your ideal clients. And LinkedIn's even got some numbers for this that people with fully complete complete profiles are 40 times more likely to receive opportunities through LinkedIn. That's 40 times more likely to start a conversation that could lead to that coffee shop or that Zoom meeting. Other mistakes advisors make are not putting their contact information on there, not engaging with other people's content, in other words, not being a networker, and forgetting my grandfather's rule people by people. So, it's all very well saying fully complete your profile is actually quite a bit to do. When you go to your LinkedIn profile, particularly on the desktop version, there'll be a little blue button at the top says, add another section. Well, these are all the sections that you could add to your LinkedIn profile. So this is the one bit about using LinkedIn that will actually be a little bit time consuming. Once you've got this bit done, the algorithm kicks in and starts sending the right people to you. It's as simple as that. Uh, so there's quite a bit to fill in and you have to fill it out, okay? Um, and that will push up your search results literally immediately, literally immediately. Other ways to uh, do really well in the search results, build a large network. That means connect with a lot of people. Include hashtags in your posts. We'll come on to that. Engage with other people's content. Uh, think and use certain keywords on your profile and certain hashtags that you use when you comment on other people's posts. Um, a side benefit of having a fully complete profile is that Google comes along and it puts your LinkedIn profile high up in Google search results. So if I search for my name on Google, my website comes up uh, top of the list, the governor of Maryland uh, comes up second, and my LinkedIn profile comes in third. And this changes almost on a daily basis. LinkedIn, sorry, Google's constantly tweaking uh, the algorithm, but LinkedIn consistently comes up very high. So let's have a look at profile pages. And what we don't want to happen is people falling asleep or just looking at our profile and going, you're not interested. And why are they not interested? Because it looks exactly the same as everybody else's profile. So you have to ask yourself these questions. Does your profile capture attention? Does it empathize with your visitors' problems? In fact, I would go so far as to say, does it empathize with your dream visitors' problems? Does it communicate in a tone that's unique to you? Does it avoid unnecessary jargon, although financial advisors do need to have a little bit of jargon on there? And is there a call to action? Remember, people by people. This is right at the heart of this. So I've created a profile test. Uh, it's quite a high bar um, that your profile has to meet. And the high bar is... It's got to be that good. It's got to be irresistible. Um, my wife is actually a careers lead for a secondary school, and she hires speakers to come in and talk to the students. She also has financial advisors come in. And so she looks at a lot of people's profiles. I sent her an email. That's how we communicate. I said, could you think you hire people to come into uh, the school? You look at LinkedIn profile. Can you give me some examples of a profile that you would describe as irresistible that I can use in my presentation? And half an hour later, she sends me an email back. There was nothing written in the email. It was just an image attached. And I opened the image and that's what she attached. 30 minutes after that, she sends me another email with another picture attached. Half an hour after that, another picture. 
And then finally I get an email that says, I like this game, here's one more. And she sent me that. So I kind of get it what irresistible might mean at one particular level. So what I'm gonna do now is show you a real LinkedIn profile. And we're gonna see if together, we're gonna to figure out if it meets the irresistibility test. So here we are. Here is a real LinkedIn profile from a real member. I'm not gonna tell you his name. I'm not gonna tell you what he does for a living but I'd just be interested in knowing at a kind of gut human level, how do you feel about this guy? Do you like him? Do you not like him? How do you feel about this guy? What's his profile telling you? What's that photo telling you? I mean, for all we know, that photo could have been taken in a police station. Um, this is a guy, his name is Art, and Art runs an office supplies outlet in Milwaukee. Art knows that the office supplies business, uh, the industry is just full of lookalikes. Everybody looks the same. They all sell the same stuff. They all market their stuff in exactly the same way. And Art wants to differentiate himself from every other office supplies outlet because they all sell the same things. And it's all about who is a race to the bottom on price. So what I want to do is most people, when I ask them, most people, feel relatively positive to this guy, even though they didn't know what he does for a living. And it shows you straight away the value of, of, a, of a profile photo. This profile photo, I suspect, is not a professional one, but he looks friendly, he looks professional, he looks a nice enough guy, and how important that is. So let's look at some of the things that he's written on his profile. And what we can see straight away is... <laughs> is that one of two things is happening. He's either taking the mickey out of the LinkedIn platform, and that's fine. I love a platform. I love it where people use a bit of creativity. So he's either taking the mickey or he's the real deal. Guess what? He's the real deal. The testimonials for this guy and his business and his services are absolutely off the scale. People love this guy. He's got an online service as well, but no one uses it. People would rather get in their pickup truck and drive for four hours to his out, uh, outlet in the, on the off chance that Art will actually be there that day. Now, I'm not suggesting that overnight you guys and girls need to suddenly become comedians. What I'm saying is what we need to do is just get a sense of who we are as people onto our LinkedIn profile so that people do actually have the opportunity to buy into us as individuals. Unfortunately, these are the words that are on many, many financial advisors' LinkedIn profiles. And to me, I mean, these words just don't jump off the page like the words on Art's profile do. I'm sure we can all tick off one or two of these uh, on our LinkedIn profile. These words belong where? On a CV. They don't belong on your LinkedIn profile page. Okay, so these sort of, this sort of boring stuff that sounds good really doesn't work at all. So a few suggestions, write it in the first person, be nice and punchy, tell little stories, get your punctuation right, say something that you care about, something that you love in your, in your life. Write it, aim it at your dream client, your dream customer. Yes, be assertive, be, a, be direct, get some personality in there, put some pictures on there, put some videos, put some infographics on there. It makes a difference. Um, if you are a chiropractor, you can be assertive and direct. So you could say something like this. Do you suffer from chronic elbow pain? Guess what? I've got the answer. You can do stuff like this. And I know this got a slightly salesy feel to it, but address the problem of your ideal client. If I'm looking at a chiropractor's profile, I'm either a supplier to a chiropractor or I need a chiropractor. Okay, so a chiropractor is addressing what it believes, what he or she believes is the pain that I'm most likely to be suffering from. So your profile is not your CV. It is you. It is your reputation. It demonstrates your value. Equally, your profile is not a circus poster. Some might argue that art's profile is verging into circus poster territory, but try and get, a, get the balance right. Another thing you need to do, we don't need to do this right now, but again, if we were doing a live workshop, we would do this exercise right now. You need to get a sheet of paper and you need to write down 12 keywords, words or really short phrases like, 
inheritance tax expert, 12 keywords that if someone typed any of them into the LinkedIn search box, you would want you to come up in their search results. 12 keywords, so inheritance tax expert is one keyword. Pension planning is one expert. Equity release expert is one keyword. You wanna come up with about 10 or 12 of these, number them in order of importance, and then take the top five keywords and get them into as many sections of your LinkedIn profile as you possibly can. And then just use the other keywords from time to time on your posts here and there. Uh, you might want to have some keywords related to services that you offer, keywords related to technical skills that you have, um, industries that you target or focus on. Uh, yes, a little bit of jargon, SIPs, FCA, DB, um, business skills that you have, and also locations. So Retirement Planner London, Retirement Planner Exeter, whatever. Think around keywords like that. So this is a really, really important ex exercise. Don't rush it. Take your time over it. Maybe if you work with colleagues, get them to do the same expert exercise and see how similar your, your words are. I mean, I'm constantly tweaking the keywords on my profile, um, but the, one of the best things to do is put yourself in the shoes of your dream client and think, what might they be typing into the search box and use those keywords? You want to use choose some hashtags as well, uh, because people are using hashtags. If you go onto LinkedIn right now, look down the news feed, you will see people are using hashtags. Hashtags are a way of adding emphasis to something you've written, and some people are typing into the search box hashtag pensions, and when they do that, the whole news feed changes to only show content that is related to pensions. You want to personalize your URL. Um, that's the, your, your address on LinkedIn. And what I've done, I've even taken my name out and replaced it with keywords. So if a conference organizer is looking for a keynote speaker, by me doing that in my URL, that will help me, or it'll improve uh, and increase the likelihood of me appearing high in their search results. You want to have a really good headline that has got keywords in it. The headline is the bit under your name. Are you looking for a high content LinkedIn expert and profit producing speaker for your next conference or event? It is written as a question. It is aimed at one of my target markets. It is also capitalized. The first letter is capitalized. And the reason I do that is it's a copywriting technique to make it look more important than it actually is. So write your headline, aim it at the main need problem, desire of your main target market. So for example, using the heart surgeons example, if you're a financial advisor, your target market is heart surgeons in West London who are concerned about retirement income. What you should write in that bit there is, are you a heart surgeon in West London concerned about your level of income in retirement? That's the sort of thing you should be doing. You could also put keywords in your name. So Jeremy here, some of you know Jeremy, he's put financial life planner in his name. You didn't used to be allowed to do that on LinkedIn. In fact, even now, LinkedIn will penalize you if you abuse that, okay? Uh, keep it simple, don't do something like that. Yep, don't abuse um, the name feature. A brand new feature on LinkedIn, you may have noticed this on one or two people's um, profiles, is there's this little uh, button here, megaphone button right next to your name. LinkedIn now enables, you can record 10 seconds of audio. You have to do this through the mobile app. LinkedIn call it the pronunciation tool um, so that if people do want to talk to you, they know how your name is pronounced. Well, um, what you can actually use it for is just to say something. So I, on mine, I think it says something like, thanks for looking at my profile today. Let me know if I can introduce you to someone from my network. Okay, so no salesy stuff, just offering to help be a networker. The experience section, really, really important. Most financial advisors never bother to, they'll put the top bit in, uh, where they work, what they do, but they don't bother to fill it out. Here's another opportunity to get keywords into the experience section as well. Also put your contact details, but notice the bits after the my website addresses. 
Uh, it says, book me to speak at your event. Marketing for IFAs, lead generation for IFAs. Most people don't know that you can add that little bit of text, which gives you an opportunity to get keywords in there. And the way you do that is you dive into the settings. Don't do it right now because it's you got to dig deep to find some of these things. When you put your uh, URL in, your website URL, you've got a choice on the right-hand side. It says company address, company website, uh, blog, and other. Choose other. And then when you choose other, it lets you add some free text here, text that includes your keywords. You also want to put your birthday. It doesn't show the year, but make your birthday visible. Why would you want to make your birthday? You just do you get excited about getting birthday messages from people? You should do for the simple reason. And I'll give you an example. Uh, my birthday last year, I had 432 people send me a happy birthday greetings through LinkedIn. Uh, great, you, you may say, but that gives me 432 opportunities to go right back to them, say, hi, John, Sue, thanks a lot. Really appreciate that. How's things with you? What's going on in your business? Is there anybody I can introduce you to? In other words, I behave like a networker. And sometimes there were people who sent me birthday wishes, a couple of conference organizers, and I'd forgotten to get back to them. I suddenly, went, oh my goodness, I didn't get back to them about that proposal. Um, and I go back to them, I don't suppose um, you, you're still looking for a speaker for that. And on a couple of occasions, I've actually managed to win a bit of speaking business. So put your birthday, make sure it's visible, use it as an opportunity to start conversations with people. Promote your LinkedIn profile elsewhere, be proud of it. LinkedIn even gives you like a profile badge. Um, it, when you get the slides, just go to that link there. You can have a little profile badge. You can put it on your website. You can put it on your blog. You can put it in your email signature. They even give you the code. Um, if you don't know how to do that, don't worry, your kids will do it for you. But what I'm saying here is tell people about your LinkedIn profile. It's an asset of your business, yeah? Okay, so we've done our search. We're looking for a financial planner. The search results have come up. And out of all the search results, I've decided to pick Tom. Tom looks a nice guy. Um, he's a financial planner at Serenity Financial Planning. And, and this is an actual screenshot of Tom's LinkedIn profile. But I've actually blanked off part of his LinkedIn profile. I wonder if any of you know which bit of his profile I have blanked off. Well, let me show you. Let me reveal. On the right-hand side of most people's LinkedIn profile, as viewed by other people, there is a column that says people also viewed. And what we have here on Tom's profile is, with the exception of Tina, a list of his competitors. Do you think Tom wants a list of his competitors on his own LinkedIn profile? I don't think so. And you remember I said at the beginning that we can get distracted. So I'm looking at Tom's profile, but down the right hand side, I can see Sandy and Liam and Tina and David and Alex. And there's Adam at the bottom now. Uh, Adam's got letters after his name. And Adam says he's a chartered financial planner. Now, what's Tom? Tom's a regular financial planner. So in my head, ignorant me, maybe I start thinking, well, maybe Adam's a better financial planner than Tom. And this is the point about distraction. And there is a strong likelihood that I'll go, I better have a quick look at Adam. And if Adam's profile speaks to me more than Tom's profile speaks to me, I'm going to go with Adam. It's as simple as that. So the good news, folks, is in the settings, you can switch that feature off so that people cannot see a list of your competitors on your LinkedIn profile. You've got to have a great photo. I'm going to whip through the photo section because it's bleeding obvious, okay? Have a great photo. If you see someone else's photo, someone you know, tell them you've got a great photo there, yeah? Um, people, who ha if you haven't got a LinkedIn profile photo, I urge you to jump off this call right now. You might as well not bother. Don't be on LinkedIn if you haven't got a LinkedIn profile photo. But there's photos and there's photos. Emma, I know Emma. But, and she's a lovely lady, but I would argue that's not the best LinkedIn profile photo. I need to be able to see the whites of her eyes. And I quite often get people, when I show this slide, people quite often ask me, and is Emma wearing any clothes? I don't know. But it's not ideal as a profile. Adam, on the other hand, 
it looks relaxed it looks friendly it's more around you know today's office environment human beings also do an interesting thing if we like the look of someone's profile photo we tend to click on it so we can have a, a closer look so i know linkedin profile photos are round at the moment but uh, if you haven't updated your profile photo recently now's a good chance to you're now able to upload quite a big file so that when someone clicks on your profile they get a big image to look at Andy, not ideal, right? Bart, not ideal. This is a financial advisor's LinkedIn profile photo. There is nothing on her photo to say that she's a part-time circus worker or that she's an expert in reptiles. No idea why she's got that. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a financial advisor's LinkedIn profile photo. Now, here's an interesting thing. I suspect most people would say that's not really ideal. But there will be people who want the services of a financial advisor who think that financial advisors are suited and booted and look like bank managers. And then they'll never in a million years go talk to a financial advisor. But if they see a picture like that, it might be enough to go, oh, OK, he's the one for me. I don't know. We've got to think carefully about this. Uh, Darren, if you're on the call, I thought I'd show your photo. Some of you will know Frank Parsons. I think Frank's retired now, but that's not exactly ideal. Vince, I suspect that's not actually you and your LinkedIn profile. This is not a financial advisor, but this is a real LinkedIn profile. These are financial advisors as well. They do nothing for your reputation. They do nothing to encourage people to want to get in touch with you. And you got a profile like that and you're a financial advisor. That's why you're having recruitment consultants saying, I think I can get you a better job. Uh, this guy's on there as well. And what's interesting, if you look down someone's profile, it's always a good idea to look down people's profiles and see what you can find. Look for something in common. Um, and yeah, he's joined the, you know, on LinkedIn, there are groups. Well, Father Christmas has joined the Wooden Toys group. And here's the thing. There are groups for everyone on LinkedIn. If you want to build relationships with accountants, there are 4,000 groups for accountants. 800 groups for solicitors, 7,000 groups for lawyers, 4,000 for people who like golf, 8,000 for people who love running. You get what I'm saying here. If you're interested in yoga, if you're interested in running, there are groups for people like you. Go join those groups. Go network in those groups. Don't go join the groups and say, hi, I'm a financial planner. If anybody here wants to talk to me, don't do that. Nobody's interested. And the wrong people, if they are interested, the wrong people will visit your profile. Go in there, find them, engage with other people, comment on other people's posts, help people out. Do not sell, create curiosity. If you have got a distinctive photo, add some relevance in your profile. So this guy here, he runs a Lexus dealership in the center of London. His passion in his life is the outdoor world, hunt, climbing, hiking, mountaineering he just loves it and one of the first things on his linkedin profile it says the outdoor world is my life he only needs one person who wants to buy a lexus who's looking who and he's come up in the search result he only needs one person who also loves walking climbing hiking to see his profile to see what he's written there's no way they're going to go look at somebody else's profile if they're looking for a lexus so learn from people who know what they're talking jeff at linkedin friendly and professional. Dara, CEO Uber, friendly and professional. Melanie at Google, friendly and professional. Some guy I found friendly and professional. Really, really important. What we also, another thing about LinkedIn profiles is we have a tendency to try and look competent or to try and look confident, which is great, but it's not actually what human beings are looking for. The things psychologists tell us that we're looking for in profile photos is trustworthiness. Um, the re it's believed the only reason we shake hands when we meet someone for the first time is to prove that we're not concealing a weapon. So trustworthiness is really, really important. So if you've got a range of different photos that you might want to use, just run it by a few of your colleagues or friends and say, do I look trustworthy? How, how they can tell, I don't know. I mean, one way to do that uh, is to have a profile photo where they can see head and shoulders and the palms of your hands. Uh, if the palms of your hands are visible, it does actually make you look more trustworthy. Add lots and lots of pictures to your LinkedIn profile because it, it impacts your search results. Um, I monitor my search results uh, 
in detail on LinkedIn. And the day after I added pictures to my profile for the very first time, my profile views just shot up. So some people, they just don't want to read your stuff, but they would rather look at pretty pictures, yeah? Other ways you can add media, photos, videos, PowerPoint presentations, files, documents, uh, pictures of testimonials that you might have, but also infographics. This is a mortgage broker in the States. You know, he could have written an article or a blog on LinkedIn about how to improve your credit score, uh, but he chose to do an infographic instead. And he wasn't a graphic designer. None of us need to be graphic designers. There are lots of websites like Canva, for example, that do ready-made free uh, infographic tools, drag and drop, add your own text, easy peasy, happy days. The big picture at the top is a fantastic piece of real estate for you to use. If I profess to be a speaker, then I'm going to have a picture of me back in the days when we could, we could speak in front of audiences. But what you can also do is add some text as well. You can't do that within LinkedIn. You have to go to a graphics tool like Canva, do it for free. And being able to use that big image at the top, that's free. Everything I've talked about today about LinkedIn, you don't need premium membership. Pete Matthews, some of you know him. Pete's known for his blogging, his vlogging, his podcasts. So he uses the big picture at the top to just to get some more imagery around uh, what he does. Use the mobile app, upload pictures from the mobile app. Um, I, when I was speaking in India, uh, they had an elephant outside. So you gotta have a selfie if an elephant comes along, upload that, the LinkedIn algorithm rewards you for using that particular tool, but also uh, put a little bit of text. And I think I said something like, I'm speaking here in India, keyword, and then add hashtag speaking. Um, another couple of clients, a conference I was speaking at in London, uh, I think that was the Keras conference. Some of you remember Keras. Um, and again, I uploaded that to the mobile app. So the summary section. Bullet points are a good way to go. Um, not all of us are great copywriters, so simple bullet points are a nice way to go. Um, this guy here, he's really gone to town on the, on the bullet points thing. Uh, to me, it looks a bit stark. Uh, Tina, on the other hand, some of you know, will know Tina, she's not gone for bullet points, but Tina knows her LinkedIn. And if I switch on my forensic torch, what you can see here is keywords. And note in the first paragraph alone, financial planning, financial planning, financial advisor, IFA, financial planning, keywords. What's also important that you do is if you, if you lay it out like this, is to make sure that your main keywords, remember those top five I mentioned, are in the first paragraph or the first couple of bullet points of your summary section. And the reason for that is when Google comes along and looks at your profile, uh, Google will just read the first paragraph and then it goes off and looks at someone else's profile as well. So a little advanced tip there. Something else that's worth bearing in mind is volunteering. Now, more and more of us these days will purchase products and services based on our perception of an individual or an organization's ethical and environmental credentials. So there is a whole section where you can highlight things that you care about in your business. If you're a financial planning firm and you care about the environment, make sure it says that on your LinkedIn profile. You only need a heart surgeon in West London who also cares about their uh, about the environment. They see that on your profile. They're not going to go look at somebody else's profile. You've got them. You have something in common. You have something in common that you both care about. Martin Bamford, some of you will know about that. His volunteer experience, so he's event director of Cranley Park Run. He's chairman of Cranley in Bloom, and he's a committee member of Cranley Chamber and Co Chamber of Commerce. Now, we all know that Martin's really good on internet marketing, but Martin knows that local is where the best business is for him. So he puts a lot of emphasis on to doing that. Now, I'm conscious that we're just coming up on 60 minutes. I'm really grateful for you sticking around. Um, I have more. If you would like to stick around for another quarter an hour, 20 minutes, um, I'll more than happily give you. If you want to jump off right now, that's, that's absolutely fine. I'll make sure that you get a copy of this, but please stick with me. Uh, I've got some more and I hope that you'll, you'll find it of value. So let's look at the skills section. Um, the skills section is really important. It is a place where you list out your skills and your skills are divided into your main skills, your industry knowledge skills, 
tools and technologies that you have skills in interpersonal and other skills that you might have as well. So here are just some of mine and you can click on any of them and you can see who has endorsed you for a particular skill. Now, this is so, so important. If somebody endorses you for a skill and LinkedIn sends you a message when they do, the thing you should do next is not endorse them back, but say thank you. Did you know that 99.9% .9 of people on LinkedIn never bother to say thank you when someone endorses them for a skill? Why would you not do that? And this is where we go back to this idea that people think this is all about technology. It's not. It's about technique. LinkedIn gives you the technology to facilitate conversations. So if somebody endorses you for a skill, go look at their profile, see if you've got something in common, and send them a little note and say thank you. And you can send that as a connection request. What about arts skills? What's he put on his own profile are his skills? Well, he's put invisible to women, sales, and more patient than I should be with people who are stupid. His real skills is, of course, sales. I love that 17 people have actually endorsed him for being invisible to women. But what, I'm, what we're saying here is that he is continuing the humor, the people by people theme throughout the entire LinkedIn profile. Okay, so the profile is set up. What are we gonna do now? As I said earlier, we're gonna focus on getting profile views. And it's super important to remember that no one visits your profile by accident. They always do it on purpose. There's always a reason why they visit your profile. And you might wanna print this slide off when you get them. These are just some of the things that could happen on LinkedIn that would result in someone visiting your profile. The most obvious one is they saw you in a search result, so they thought they'd have a look, or they saw a status update or a piece of content that you put, or they saw a comment, or it was your birthday. Any of these things happen, they could look at. So here's the thing, guys, do more of this stuff. Do more of the things on this list and you dramatically increase the likelihood that, the, that people will visit your profile, but we want the right people. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these, but again, save this slide for when you get it. There are various things that are working on LinkedIn right now, and I'm going to touch on one or two of these um, as we go, but uh, I'm not going to go through all of them. So first, one thing is voice messaging. You want to stand out from the crowd, put a, put a voice message in someone's inbox, not a written text message. 90% of people, it's higher than 90%, when they're talking to other people on LinkedIn, they send a written message. Well, you can send voice messages. They always get listened to. And a simple voice message could be something like, um, hi, John, thanks for looking at my profile today. I really appreciate it. I hope you found something of interest. Let me know if I can introduce you to somebody in my network. In the meantime, it would be great to connect. I've got some scripts. Uh, when you stick around to the end and you get the PDF book, these scripts are in there as well. Send it as a voice message. They always get opened. Um, you can actually also send, I don't know if I've mentioned this here. Yeah, you can also do a video messages on LinkedIn. That's relatively new as well. So a video message that sits in someone's inbox as well. Again, all you could do, pick your phone up. Hi, John. Hi, Sue. Thanks for taking on my profile. Really appreciate it. Uh, let me know if I can introduce you to, from, to anyone on my network. In the meantime, it would be great to connect. Simple stuff, yeah? You will differentiate yourself from every other financial advisor. You will stand out from the crowd. LinkedIn Live. Uh, if you have LinkedIn Live, it's the equivalent of live streaming that you've probably seen on Facebook. You can now do live streaming via your company page on LinkedIn. It is incredibly effective at driving traffic to your profile, your company page, and then on to where you want to take them. Uh, a really good thing to do is just do simple interviews, interview a colleague, interview a client. Um, really, really popular. You have to apply to use it right now during lockdown. Uh, LinkedIn's just put a lid on that for the moment, but they are going to open it up again soon. Really, really effective. Um, super. And absolutely brand new. This only came out last week in the UK. Yes, you've seen stories on Facebook. Yes, you've seen stories on Instagram. They are now rolling out stories on LinkedIn as well. Be interesting to see how this goes down. Um, I think we'll see quite a bit of rubbish on there. 
Um, but what I also think there is the most phenomenal opportunity for creativity by financial advisors, just to create a really short series of photos, really short videos, um, things that are going on in your world, things that are going on in your business, really short, simple stuff. Again, if you use this, LinkedIn will reward you and they'll make sure that your stories, your posts, your profile is much higher in the search results. Nothing financial, big, big mistake financial advisors make on LinkedIn is not knowing your numbers. And by that, I mean simple stuff like who's visited your profile. Now, if I was to say to any of you right now, would you like to know the names and contact details of everyone who visits your website? I suspect most of you would say, uh, yeah. Well, there is actually a way of doing that through scorecards. Send a message to me later. I'll show you how you can get the names and addresses of people who visit your website. But most people aren't doing that. But you can do it on LinkedIn as well. The data that LinkedIn gives you is how many people viewed your profile, what they do, where they work, what they typed into the search box, who's looked at your profile, and also who has followed you. This is just invaluable information priceless information and when you know that information it gives you amazing insights into how well or otherwise you are using LinkedIn and the simple fact of the matter is if the wrong people are looking at your profile you need to make changes and LinkedIn periodically gives you uh, uh, little sporadic updates and here's one that I got um, LinkedIn sent me a message saying, Phil, you have shown up in search results 70 times in the last three days. So that's telling me, I think I'm kind of getting my a keyword strategy right. But what's more important to me is that 12 people went on to view my profile. 70, great, but 12 actually viewed my profile. So now that I know how many people viewed my profile, what do you think I should do next? What do you think I should do next now that I know who has visited my profile? Well, that's what I should do next. I should say thank you. 99.9% .9 of people on LinkedIn never bother to say thank you to people who looked at their profile. It's like having, uh, if you're a financial advisor and you've got a high street presence and you see somebody comes in through the front door of your high street present and you go and you run out the back and hide how do you think they're going to feel pretty pissed off i would imagine yeah don't do that by not saying thank you to people who've taken the trouble to look at your profile you're missing out yeah you can have a couple of recruiters yeah you're going to get a couple of suppliers but in there as well could well be and if you get your keywords right could well be people actually want to engage you uh, research I did found last year that most financial advisors have got more than enough people visiting their own website um, to keep them going. They need never buy a lead ever again. The only thing is their websites are designed in, a, in such a way that those people never actually interact and engage with the website. A scorecard will do that. Same goes for LinkedIn. You must say thank you to people. And again, the scripts I use show, thanks Sue for looking at my profile. I hope you found something of interest. Let me know if I can introduce you to anyone from within my network. It would be great to connect. So what we're trying to do is not sell them something. What we're trying to do is, if you've been paying attention, start a conversation. 99% of the time when I send that message as a connection request, I get my connection accepted. Almost 100% of the time. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the single most valuable feature on LinkedIn, the ability to be able to see who looked at your profile and have a conversation with them. Why should you say thank you to them? I mean, the, the financial advisor clients that I work with on a one-to-one -one basis, I've had them say this the very first time I said, thank you for looking at my profile, I ended up with a new client. People, financial advisors tell me this time and time again. Common interests. So one of the things I do uh, is a bit of kickboxing. We can't do any kickboxing during lockdown, unfortunately. And here's me trying to, um, uh, there's me in the black. Um, I want to use kickboxing as a way to get me speaking booking. So let me show you how I do this. Now, to me, within financial services, uh, a really good speaking engagement for me is, with, is to speak uh, at the annual sales conference for a bank 
or a big, big provider. They pay really well. There's hundreds, if not thousands of people there, and they'll buy my books at the end. So win-win for me. So how do I find the people who book speakers um, on LinkedIn? Well, every speaker booker, every conference organizer in the world is on LinkedIn. And they are constantly being sent direct messages from speakers saying, book me, book me. That's not how you do it. This is the way you do it. So how do I get into a bank? So I type kickboxing into the search box. It gives me 50,000 people on LinkedIn who've got kickboxing uh, on their profile. Now, the first few pages will all be kickboxing instructors. I don't want a kickboxing instructor. I've already got one. So what I now do is I hit the filters and I choose London. Let's make it hard for myself. And I choose financial services as well. LinkedIn redoes the search and I start going through. Uh, interesting, there's a financial advisor. Um, client service manager, interesting group of people, but there he is. He's my way in. Now I'll let, I'll lay you any money that Rui here is not the person who books speakers for Barclays annual sales conference, but he is my way in. So I have a look at his profile. Uh, turns out he's quite hardcore at uh, jujitsu, but we've got something in common. So I'm now going to send Rui a message. Do you think this is the message that I should send him. Of course not. There is no way in a million years that he's going to uh, answer my connection request. So, and yet 99% of people, A, never bother to customize their connection message on LinkedIn, um, and B, they go into sales mode. So just, just don't do it, okay? So this is what I would send to him. This is what I did send to him. This is what started a conversation that led to a coffee in central London that led to me speaking at one of their conferences and events. This is how you do it. You personalize the message. Yeah. But look at this. Hi, Rui. I spotted you on LinkedIn and noticed we both do martial arts and we're in financial services. We're a rare breed. It'd be great to connect and talk about you. Not me, you. That's how you do it, guys and girls. Uh, I'll do a bit of yoga, and I can do exactly the same thing here as well. So I type yoga into the search box. Um, it gives me 657,000 results. I don't want a yoga teacher. What I do want is somebody who books speakers, okay? So I use the filters. I choose United Kingdom. I choose events services. LinkedIn then shows me 420 people who do yoga and who organize events. I've got 420 people there that I've got something in common with that I can then personalize my message and do it. And it's as simple as that. People buy people. People are naturally attracted to other people where you've got something in common. People are attracted to other people who start conversations. It is as simple as that. I mean, let me prove that. Do you remember, you remember when we used to go to dinner parties? You might be sat next to somebody, complete stranger, and you, you know, you're making conversation, um, but you remember, you know that moment where one of you suddenly says, oh, I was playing golf the other day, and you go, oh, you play golf, do you? And you play golf. Suddenly the conversation just bursts into light, bursts into flames, bursts, lights up, because you have something in common. And this is one of the things you really need to look for is where you've got things in common. Even if that thing in common is you both went to the same university, or you've got contacts in common, or you're in the same town or city. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's look up status updates and posts. How do we, what's another way to drive people to our, um, our profile? We've got to know how to play to the algorithm. This, this is where the magic really happens, okay? When you post something on LinkedIn, they don't show it to all your contacts. They only show it to a few people. And depending on what happens, they then show it to a few more people. So first of all, your piece of content gets uh, bonus points for what's called dwell time. If people are scrolling through uh, the newsfeed and if they stop for a short period of time, even if they don't click on your piece of content, even if they stop, so it's in their line of sight, your piece of content will be seen, will get points and will be shown to more people. If your piece of content gets some likes, some comments and some shares, they'll show it to more people. If it gets those likes, comments and shares quite quickly, they'll show it to even more people. And if it's starting to rock, 
there's actually a few people uh, in LinkedIn's headquarters who actually give it a manual boost and it has the potential to go viral. So whatever you post has to prompt curiosity. Okay, it's got to have a great first line that gets people's attention. This sort of thing will be penalized. So this is a real financial advisor's post on LinkedIn. And all it says is you can book an appointment with our advisors online. Guess what? No one cares. The LinkedIn algorithm doesn't care either. So the LinkedIn algorithm will penalize that post and it will make sure that it doesn't get seen. This is social media. It is not social networking. It is broadcasting. It is not helping. This is another thing that financial advisors do. I've seen, in fact, all businesses do this. Check out our latest blog. It's great. Click here. And then you put a link. Don't do that. The LinkedIn algorithm says that is broadcasting and it's encouraging people to actually leave LinkedIn to go look at another website. LinkedIn does not like you encouraging people to go click somewhere else um, and, and go. So don't do that either. So the things that work really well are to tell really, really short observational stories, things that are going on in your world, something that just happened. You tripped over the cat. Um, simple, simple things. I think I've got an example of that in a, in a moment. Try not to put images in posts that you use on the desktop. It's okay to use images if you do it through the mobile app. Don't put links, I just said that. Do comment on other people's posts. And all you need to do is put great posts too. Thanks for that. That's all you need to do. If you comment on other people's posts, even other financial advisors' posts, the LinkedIn algorithm spots that you are not a broadcaster, but that you are a networker. Add some hashtags in as well, and also use video as well. Uh, some people like to post articles on LinkedIn. If you want to do that, they've got to be proper, decent articles that have been well thought through. They've got to be long, detailed, based on research, and have unique insights based on perhaps research that you've done. Now, that is a really good strategy if you've got the time. And for some people, it's great. It could actually work quite well in financial planning. If you want to do a detailed case study, that could work. So a bit more time consuming, but very good if you follow those rules. So um, here is the ideal post on LinkedIn. Right at the beginning of lockdown, uh, John Young, a BBC journalist, uh, finished a, sh a shift um, at Broadcasting House, came out and someone had nicked his bike. Um, and this is the post. And he did it as a video, he just got his mobile phone out and said, I've just come off uh, a really long shift. Somebody's nicked my bike. Uh, you know, that sort of thing. So it got attention. It created curiosity. It was done as a video. It was timely and relevant. It had a hint that there was an emotional element to it as well, yeah? It had a message um, and it included hashtags. That's the perfect post on LinkedIn. Um, no links to click. No images, but a video. LinkedIn likes you to use video. Here's one I did myself. I was actually speaking at a conference in Bulgaria a couple of years ago, um, and I hadn't been particularly organized. I hadn't booked my parking at Gatwick Airport. Um, so, and I needed to go to the post office. I needed to get a haircut. Um, and I just checked the price of the parking. I went onto the Gatwick website. I was quoted 27 pounds 50. I thought, great, I clocked that. Went to the post office, went to get my haircut came back, the price had gone up. Okay, that's what I posted. That little story, 1,200 likes, 227 comments, 23 direct messages. All comments said the same thing. Oh, Phil, you need to book it. I know that, okay? 227 comments because it was a human story that people could relate to. But the best bit is 23 direct messages. That means 23 conversations five of which led to some business. Yeah, that's how it's done. If you must use pictures, go for the jugular, yeah? Max has posted here, first day at work for Magnus, our new office dog. Look at that, 1,700 likes, 227 people had nothing better to do with their time than to comment on that, okay? It works. Max will have got a hell of a lot of people looked at his profile. Mark runs a Bentley dealership. You can use three words to describe this appallingly colored Bentley in our front lot. 
1,300 people commented on it. Nick will have had a lot of profile views, a lot of direct messages. This one, you might even have seen this one. Uh, we're nearing the end now, we're, we're nearly there. Uh, Emily, HR manager at, at ASDA. Uh, this is Patrick, he's 86. He stopped me in Leeds to ask me how my day was. He then asked if by chance I had time for a coffee. I canceled my meetings. I spent two hours with him. He opened doors, 230,000 likes, 11,000 comments. She would have had hundreds and hundreds of people look at her profile. She would have had job offers. I mean, Asda probably got some fairly tight social media policies and rules. She probably broke a few of them, but no one's going to fire her for that. That, ladies and gents, is how you use LinkedIn. Hashtags, I mentioned this earlier. Now, um, this, is, this is so powerful, it's ridiculous. Uh, please do use it. Go to the LinkedIn search box and type in hashtag mortgages or hashtag pensions. You, well, LinkedIn will do a search. It will tell you how many other people follow that particular hashtag. And then you click the follow button. Okay. When you click the follow button, you are sending a message to the LinkedIn algorithm that pensions or mortgages or whatever is a topic that you are interested in, you want to see more content related to it, and that you are an expert in. Click the button, tell LinkedIn that this is a topic you are interested in. The LinkedIn newsfeed will then change to only show you content related to those hashtags. And then it is your job, and you could do this, do it a couple of times a day, it takes you like all of 10 seconds, and just pick out other people's posts, and it could be other financial advisors' posts, and all you need to do is put, great post, Sue, thanks for the heads up, hashtag mortgages, hashtag extra lease, or thanks for your post, Mike, have you read John Smith's book on the subject, highly recommended, hashtag financial planning. The algorithm says, the algorithm spots that you are a networker, you are engaging with other people, you are adding value to other people's lives, you are not a broadcaster, therefore, that post will be very visible, you will get more profile views, and they will show you higher in the LinkedIn search results. So to sum up, be clear who you're targeting, know their problems, issues, concerns, worries, fears, inside out, back to front. Have a plan for why and how you're gonna use LinkedIn. Understand how the algorithm works and play to that, just like the example I just shown, and start conversations that lead people to your value ladder. Differentiate yourself. Know your keywords and your hashtags. Highlight whose problems you solve and how. That means write your LinkedIn profile for your dream client. Okay, so that when your dream client finds you as a result of all this good stuff that you're doing, when your dream client finds you, it, your profile literally speaks to them. They're not going to want to go and look at another financial advisor's profile. Okay. And here's an interesting thing. Even if you write your profile aimed at your dream client, the people who are not quite your dream client, they will want to talk to you as well. They will aspire to want to work to you. Fully complete your profile. Know those numbers. Thank people for looking at your profile in a personalized message. Use their name. Start conversations. Comment on other people's posts and use your company page as well. We haven't got time to talk about company pages today, but basically do everything on your company page that you're also doing on your personal page as well. Have a plan, be really clear. You saw my plan right at the beginning there. Just model that, copy that, have a plan. And when you have a plan, you'll suddenly find you're not wasting any more time on LinkedIn. You'll have real focus and start taking this stuff seriously. LinkedIn's not just another social media tool that someone suggested you should use. It is a social networking platform that gets you profile views, and then it's over to you, yeah? Remember what my grandfather said, people buy people. LinkedIn's nothing to do with technology. It's everything to do with technique, how you interact and engage with other human beings. So if you'd like a free PDF copy of this, go to that address just there. Um, it will uh, run an assessment of how you use LinkedIn. It is a scorecard, okay? It is a way for me to get email addresses, data, and it just works. I'm building, I'm building, I've got about six on the go at the moment, scorecards for financial advisors. You want to see how this works? Go take my LinkedIn for advisors scorecard 
it will tell you how well you are using LinkedIn or not, as the case may be. It will give you some suggestions. And at the end of that, you'll get your free PDF copy of this book. So uh, thank you so much for uh, your time today. I really, really appreciate it. Um, if I haven't answered your question, I apologize, but I will get a list of the questions and I will go back to you uh, directly yourself. Thanks again. If you were on our first webinar last week, really appreciate you coming back again this week. We'll be doing another one uh, next Wednesday as well. So, But in the meantime, thanks very much for your time. Really appreciate you being with me and see you next time. Thanks.